All right, guys, we are going to basically go over the respiration anatomy of the cat. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is there is a list online and I'm just going to go through each individual structure. So if you want to print out this list, um, you can, and I'll just be going through each one as we go through the cat. Okay. So first, when we breathe in, so this is our cat, we've got our thoracic cavity open. Um, our air is gonna come in through our external nares or through our mouth into our nasal cavity or our oral cavity. From there, it's going to go into our pharynx. So if I open this up and I take a probe, our pharynx is gonna be this hole that goes up into our sort of our nasal cavity and our oral cavity up there, all right? So where that probe is going into is our pharynx. And I know it's a little hard to see, but basically it's just a hole. Now from there, it's going to enter our larynx. Our larynx is composed of this cartilage right here. And let's take a look at the inside because we have some structures on the inside of the larynx that's important for this exam. Okay, so first of all, we have our epiglottis and our epiglottis is gonna be this sort of tongue-like piece that closes or opens over that trachea. And that's what's going to keep food from going down into the windpipes. Now, if I spread this open a little bit more, we have a hole, all right? So we have a hole that goes, let's see if I can get my probe in here first. down into our trachea so I can actually put that whole probe down there and that's where our air is going to go. So the skin that's right on the outside is going to be our true vocal cords. So what you're seeing, let me see if I can hold this at the same time. I'm telling you this takes talent. So if I zoom in here, what you're seeing right here is our true vocal cords on either side of that glottis. Okay, those are our true vocal cords. Now, if I move this over, we can see that there's another flap of skin that's right here. Okay, and it's on the other side as well. So we can see next to our true vocal cords, there's another ridge of skin right here. And that's our false vocal cords, all right? So glottis, true vocal cords, false vocal cords, epiglottis. And that's what's composing, if we look at the outside, our larynx. So we can then see this structure that goes from our larynx this long tube, and that is our trachea. You can identify it because of the cartilage rings or the cartilage rings that go down it. We have this guy right next to it, this sort of tube right here, okay? You see how it looks like it's attached to the trachea? This is our esophagus. So our esophagus is much softer and it goes down. It doesn't have these ridges on it. So because our digestion and our respiratory exam are at the same time, you might see both of these structures pinned in the same image. So it's good to know that these are cartilage rings that are supporting the rigidity of our trachea so that it doesn't collapse. And then this one right next to it is our esophagus. Now from here, our heart has been removed. So this is our heart. And basically this guy would just sit on the cat, sort of like that. But I've gone ahead and I've taken it off. And what we'll notice is that we've got our trachea that continues to go down our body. And right about here, you can see that it junctions into two sides. So we've got one side that goes this way and one side that goes that way. And those are our primary bronchi. So our primary bronchi are then going to sort of break off into secondary and tertiary bronchi that enter our lungs. So what you're seeing, these three lobe structures here, so we've got one, two, and three here, and then one, two, and three on this side, these are composing our lungs. Okay, so this is our lungs. Now, our lungs are gonna be sitting right above this spongy sort of muscle right here, and this is our diaphragm. So this is what's keeping our abdominal cavity and our thoracic cavity separate. It's a pretty tough muscle, and what happens is when this contracts, it's going to contract downward. That downward motion is going to sort of create negative pressure in our thoracic cavity, and then our lungs can expand and fill with air. So that's how we're able to breathe. Now, this diaphragm is controlled by this nerve right here, and there are two of them. So we've got one going here and we've got one that's sort of around here somewhere. It's right here. And what these do is these guys actually go all the way down to the diaphragm. They connect to the diaphragm right about here. And then that's going to go up into our uh, spinal cord and basically connect with our brain so that we can contract our diaphragm downward. Okay. Now, the last two things that you'll see on your list are your visceral pleura and your parietal pleura. We can't see those because they're the membranes that are making up the outside of the lungs. Um, so you don't have to worry about identifying that on the cat, but you should be able to identify the right versus the left lung. So again, let's go over this. We've got our external nares that's going into our, or our mouth, which is going into our oral cavity or our nasal cavity. 
From there, our air is going to be going into our pharynx, which is just this hole that's right here. So you can see that hole. It then goes through our larynx, and our larynx is composed of our epiglottis, our glottis, which is the hole in the middle, the true vocal cords, which are closest to the glottis, and then the false vocal cords, which are on the outside. It's going to be traveling down our trachea. It's going to be dividing into the primary bronchi. We then have our right and our left lungs. And then below our lungs, we've got our diaphragm, which is going to be controlled right here by this phrenic nerve. Okay? All right, not so bad, huh?